Yeah. And we are live. And a very good evening, everybody, and a welcome to our Lyceum evening from Paul Spiritualist Church down on the south coast of the UK. I'm feeling we're going to have a very lively evening this evening, but also a very informative evening. The two wonderful gentlemen. We have uh, Mark Stone, who is fairly local to the area. Mark, good evening, sir. Good evening, Laurie. Good evening, David. And we also have David Shiza. Wonderful. Welcome. I got it right. <laughs> you have. Yes, absolutely. David, thank you for agreeing to be with us tonight. It's a great honour to have both of you two gentlemen in conversation together. So I'll hand over to our guests to do just a little introduction about themselves. And we'll start with the lovely Mark. OK, so um, for those people that don't know me, I've, I've I'm a born and bred spiritualist, so I've been in spiritualism all my life, uh, and I started demonstrating on platform when I was 17, so I've been demonstrating for 32 years now. Um, I know I don't look like it, but yeah, 32 years, and um, my I know that tonight we were going to talk about passions and things, so um, being brought up with healing, healing's a, a great love to me, a great passion, and the trance work as well as, as many aspects of the mediumship, so it's something that um, has always been all the way through a part of what I do and what I love. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. David, sir, uh, just a wee bit about yourself, please. Well, because I'm only 21, I haven't got that experience. That... <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, no <laughs> <people argue. laughs> it's really not. No, as you can as you can tell, it's, it's a privilege to be here. And thank you very much for the invitation. And it's, it's really nice to to be with you both and and those that listen in. Um, who am I? I'm a Swiss guy who immigrated to the UK about ten years ago. I can't really say that I knew about spiritualism when I was seventeen. Um, I started to touch ground with mediumship and that has nothing to do with spiritualism and maybe we can then go later into that uh, with with the phenomenon of mediumship okay when I was about 25 so I'm not a born medium I'm not in that sense as I personally class it a natural medium I never really had that awareness as a child I can't say that I ever knew about spirits before it was more a bit of coincidence if that exists mm -hmm. that i found england and the arthur finley college so that was where i found the mediumship and then within the years of moving forward it was only the arthur finley college i was never really interested in becoming a medium or doing mediumship i never really joined a circle on a regular basis i was in one and that was only a very short time. But somehow the Arthur Finley College going there and being there was for, for me enough. There was there was something within that place that just drew me year after year for one week for about a decade. And then when I made the decision to move to the UK, which is either work or love, in my case it was love, then I decided let let's have a look what this mediumship is all about and i started my education with the snu specialist national union and i stayed with it and i got my certificates diplomas and so on and am now an appointed tutor at the Arthur finley college to round that up but yes i'm a work in progress Aren't we Aren't we all? <laughs> they can keep chipping away at my waistline and <laughs> knocking the pounds off and that would be wonderful anyway moving on rapidly there's we we all have this common bond we all have a great passion for our expression of spiritualism and i really love something you just said there david about mediumship different to spiritualism mm. Mm. And you know what, as in the great scheme of things, this has been something that's been around the periphery for about the last 10 days as well. Um, the understanding of spiritualism beyond uh, that which we 
and the word actually mediumship i'm, I'm a bit pedantic and i'm allowed to be because i'm over <laughs> and <laughs> what's that 77 did you hear that as well Mark? <laughs> Oh, we've oh. lost David on the connection. Ah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Sorry, Lord. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> uh, recovering and regaining myself. Um, I forgot what I was going to talk about now. Let's see, I'm at that <laughs> age. Spiritualism, <laughs> meet your mediumship. The word mm. mediumship. Yeah, and um, the word mediumship. One of the things um, that is very much in my energy is about the language we use you know we often hear uh, comments about the lack of education within a lot of our churches and centers that the message has become it you know that is the sole core of what we do <clears throat> but it's beyond that so it's, it's words like mediumship i use a phraseology which is irritating to people um of evidential mediumship healing mediumship philosophical mediumship to start to bring to people's awareness you know the term medium is generic mm -hmm. um and it's just looking at the language we use and I, as i say going back to your comment there uh, if you want to expand on that a, a wee bit about mediumship as in evidential mediumship is not spiritualism and vice versa. David. So <laughs> I, I, I need to open that a little bit up because yeah. what, what the British don't realize is to have churches is actually a privilege. Mm -hmm. So where I have come from, or uh, where I came from, from Switzerland, I mean, it's 10 years ago now, it has changed a little bit. There was no churches. There is no spiritualism as a religion, okay? Um, it, it's starting to build a little bit. Now they have, I believe, one or two churches, if I'm correct. It could be a bit, little bit more. But in my time, we didn't know about religion. We didn't know about the philosophy. We didn't know about um what 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 is a church service as such we only had the phenomenon that maybe british medium came over and and presented if you had access to that so of course you you, you went because you were intrigued or oh, uh having a, a chat with the dead ones isn't that lovely let's go to an evening of mediumship and and this was just what was understood and I, I like that you are more precise because we should be more precise. We, we, we're very, very sloppy. So in that sense, that's why I say for me, philosophy was something I grew into it. And even if I, when I came to the Arthur Finley College, I know there was the, the, the Sunday service, the, the Wednesday service. Well, yes, they did the address, but I was 25 at that time. I was not at all interested in what they had to say. Right. And I wasn't interested in what they had to say for years to come. I was interested in the message. I was interested in the phenomenon. Oh, talking to granny, getting a message from granny because I miss my granny very much. I was in a miserable uh, situation life-wise and I needed that support because I felt unloved and un under not understood so it's nice to have granny coming back and say do you know what I love you and it's like yes but that doesn't help me to change my life doesn't it so, so so in a way for me the doorway into into spiritualism was the message because I didn't have anything else because in in Switzerland it was non-existent so that's why I make this differentiation um, and and now I'm pushing the boundaries and, and Mark might want to say about that as well. There is a difference between uh, being spiritual and spiritual. Listen, and, and what is really nice, I know a lot of wonderful spiritual mediums, but not everybody needs to be progressed in being a great medium mm -hmm. yeah yeah agree. so there are two pathways that i differentiate and say okay the spiritual aspect is a 
personal development way and the mediumship is a separate one and great it becomes when both come together but that's what i believe at this very moment in time wonderful i, I absolutely love that something i not thought of something i've not actually taken apart in my mind and but totally totally get it and the more we understand though the better fit we are to be able to progress not only ourselves but you two gentlemen especially are great wonderful teachers of people and i know that you both impart these wonderful thoughts you know not just the the mechanics of mediumship so you know you're going to be a medium so uh, you've got to learn search and you get to communicate evidence, but it's the underpinning side of it. You know, I often say here in our church uh, at the end of the service, I said, you know what, you've had these messages and a lot of you have had these messages for years and years. Have you ever thought this might be an invitation from the spirit world to say, this has happened to them, what's going to happen with you? you know if we go on holiday we look up i'm not going to turn up in antarctica in a bikini uh and like, wait well i might <laughs> depends what the pay is like anyway um <laughs> i'm not gonna go uh, shut up lord stop doing anagram if we go anywhere we investigate it you know we'll, we'll get to know what the local currency is david you've just returned from india uh you would have done some background work before you went on that wonderful wonderful journey you've just been on because you want to have a little bit of familiarity where we're going and i mean you can apply that energy to life you know we we keep on about the continuity of life it is unbroken we take a blink and we're suddenly somewhere else um, and we're continually saying that, but it's to engage our congregations and our audiences on the virtual or in the physical churches or under your tutelage to actually give that thought time and intelligence of understanding it. I, I think one of the one of the big things, and again, that separation of uh, spiritualism, spirituality, and mediumship. Bear in mind that spirit communication exists in every tradition in the world. It's not the sole domain of, of spiritualism. And one of the things that, that for me, I always think of myself, uh, hopefully, as a rational spiritualist, that I like to have the proof that underpins the knowledge and the learning. And when you're talking about this exploring the, the, the terrain, the landscape, you know, exploring the unknown country, exploring the unknown territory, it depends on whether people have this desire to really search for themselves as well. Because uh, nowadays in, in modern technology, we have these terrible little things at the end of our, our wrists and it does it all for us. We want to know something, ping, we find it. Whereas with that spiritual personal development, with the medium mystic unfoldment, healing, whatever it may be, it's a personal journey that we have to keep searching digging and looking within and also looking at what outside of us resonates and fits so spiritualism you know like david was saying it was the the mediumship that that called to him and the the college and you know for me <coughs> i was just brought up with it so it didn't seem as if it was anything outside a normal family house it wasn't until i got outside the house at school and went oh doesn't everybody put their hands on their loved ones and go, please take it away? Mm -hmm. Why doesn't everyone else do that? And then it's like, oh, okay, maybe my household's different. And so as a, as a teenager, particularly, I just started to read everything and anything I could get my hands on to understand, because I'm the kid that asks why, and I still do now. Every time somebody says, well, this happens, and I go, it's interesting. Why does that happen? How does that happen? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes, you know, people go, well, I don't know. And it's like, oh, and I'll go, I'll go away and want to find out. So that, that I think that's a passion as well to explore deeper and to want to to inquire. I mean, Glyn was very much like that. He read every subject and he said, I don't consider myself a spiritualist. He said, I think that's confining. Well, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that thought. <clears throat> 
realize yeah. there are no boundaries. Absolutely. That, that can actually be really intimidating, can't it? That, that can be to people first venturing out. Well, it's freeing, you. it's freeing you, and freedom isn't always. <laughs> well, um, I'm a bit con controversial. I like the limitation, mm -hmm. and bearing in mind this is just an opinion. Okay, yes. I grow every day. Maybe tomorrow, if I if I know something else, I will grow and have a different opinion. So I allow myself to have that, and I think that that spiritualism isn't it we, we we that's what you said mark we never actually know the full truth no but unfortunately people seem to feel that they know the full truth and actually that's not the spirit of spiritualism yeah. and when i look at spiritualism and and i have to say i with this this uh with this element of humanist yes of course the spiritualist is humanist but what i what i come more and more into <laughs> Um, a bit more of a structure, which I love, is mediumship we have, which is a tool to say, okay, it supports an opinion that spiritualism carries, that life is eternal, that consciousness lives on, and that what we are today counts into the afterlife, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's not just a one-time fly, I do something and it has no consequence. So when I look at how mediumship is used nowadays, and this is very open, so we're talking about more open than evidential ancestry mediumship, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> I mean, there are many different concepts in this world, which some of them, I have to be honest, I cannot follow. I cannot. Mm -hmm. I do not understand it. I don't know how you can say... This is the truth because you have no foundation to validate its realness, okay? And there is where I personally love mediumship, evidential mediumship, because evidential mediumship, and we still have to prove that the afterlife is real, just because we have acknowledged that this is the case, yeah. doesn't mean that we have yet the ultimate proof that we mm. can go out into this world and say, here, this is real. We haven't. We are still questioned. Question. We are still looked at. If you say, "What's your profession?" and I say, "Well, I'm a medium." What's this? I'm talking to dead people. They still think I'm a bit loopy. Okay. <laughs> Most of the people don't know. Okay. Yeah. So what I love within mediumship or evidential mediumship is we're not. We really not believe. It should be so good that through the information given that the intelligent, rational, analytical mind can follow and say, do you know what, even though I don't believe what you're saying, with what you have delivered, it makes me question where I am. Yeah. That's mediumship. That is, that is why we do mediumship, because we want to prove a point. It, it's, not, it's not just, let's have granny here and it's wonderful. And this is what you said, Laurie. People come over and over again into a church or into, into an evening of mediumship or whatever, and they want to hear the same story over and over again. But actually, once you had that proof of the afterline, you should know my loved ones are with me. Mm. I, should, yeah. I should only have one communication from my loved ones, and this communication, and sorry, I haven't produced that myself, I believe. Okay? I'm still pushing my mediumship. But my mediumship should be so good that with one communication, a person says, I don't need any more communications. I know they are still part of me. Mm. And this is what I love. You know, this is this is where I then say, yes, as a humanist, we could be great. And there are many concepts. But what intrigues me within within spiritualism and because it is a bit tight, it, it is, is a bit focused, is that one element hey, they are intelligent, we can talk to them, they talk back, and actually they talk back with things that I didn't expect them to say. Yes. You know, yeah. it's like, hang on, I'm not just hearing what I believe, <laughs> I'm hearing things that make me question 
who I am in life. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I believe that my gran, depending on what decisions I make in life, would sometimes or should sometimes come back and say, David, you're a bit of an idiot, aren't you? <laughs> Why did you do this? Mm. And do you not think that it's up to you now to apologize? But when I look into the communications normally, they laugh and light, don't they? Which is, I know the spirit world would come with laugh and light. Mm. But if they're real people, then maybe they would also come and say, David, um, not quite agreeing in how you acted yesterday. Yeah. But this is where I think mediumship, and again, for on the broad and not just on the demonstratable and, and, and professional mediumship side of things, but actually mediumship is the continuing conversation. And, and this is where I think, again, understanding the greater message, when people see mediums on a platform, and, and they get their, their message, their evidence of whatever that may be. And it's then, is there in place within our churches, our centres online, is there in place the ability for people to realise there is more to it? Because um, sadly, a lot of places, it's a demonstration of mediumship maybe once a week. And there's nowhere for them to go with that. And they, they get messages and they think, oh, that's all spiritualism's about. And, and it's then sort of getting people to, to question and to search. And also, when you have that lovely evidential link from a medium that maybe proves that your own personal moments with the spirit world where you thought you were um, dreaming or you thought you were just having wishful thoughts about your loved ones proves to be true that you are having that continued conversation. But then saying now, you know, this is so that you can sit and work with it. This is so not work with it as in you have to become a medium, but that actually you still can have the conversation with your loved one. You can still have that for yourself. For me, <laughs> when I work with people, I say, I don't care if you're coming because you want to work and be a serving medium, serving churches, whatever, whether you want to be a private sittings medium, a healer, or whether you just want to know and understand the spirit world and the divine for you because we all have we all should know that we can have connection to the spirit world regardless of how able we believe we are um it's part of it and that's the greater message is it's not a case of just the people on our platforms are the only ones who can do it we're not special everybody's unique but everyone can connect and and that's where a greater message starts to come in and and I agree with David. You know, there's there's a lot there's a lot out there that that I don't resonate with, <clears throat> and there are other things that I do. But again, it's how things settle for people. Um, and Glenn and I used to talk about that a lot. He'd say, "What do you think about this?" And I go, mm -hmm. and he go, and I go, "What do you think about?" Mm -hmm. And we'd have these long conversations about all different sorts of things. But you know, there's the question mark. What does it give to the individual? How does it touch them, move them? What's evidence? for one person is not evidential for another, um, you know, and people all, all uh, you know, you'll get people that will say, oh, well, you, anyone could say that, anyone could take it. And it's like, well, actually, no, let's have a show of hands. How many other people could take this? No one. So it's only one in a whole room full of 70, 80 people, whatever it might be. It's not like everyone in the room suddenly goes, oh, I can accept all of that. So there's a, a quality, but it's then once they've got that, as David said, once you've got that knowing, where do you go then? Where's the encouragement to keep going and to keep searching? Yeah, yeah. Um, interesting, and, and you both touched on this thing about there are things out there that don't resonate with us. You know, <clears throat> we've got to acknowledge today's world. You know, uh, where are we? The 18th of November, 2023. This is today. This is the world we live in. And there is so much uncertainty out there. There is so much challenge and strife and all things going on. But when we as a species are in this energy of this great uncertainty, all the underpinnings of all we knew as familiar just seem to be getting knocked away and whatever. This is when we have different schools of thought coming in because some will come in on a very very believable aspect 
act uh, and because it's got a certain feel good and in fact a lot of them have got their roots in old-fashioned orthodoxy so i always say with human race one of our basic faults is we're either looking for somebody to save us or somebody to blame and we're seeing a lot of these schools the thought coming in and some trying to append themselves onto spiritualism but as david so succinctly put there spiritualism is evidential mm. everything we do and it's consistent as well and this is part of the thing i've been sat with my team and they were talking about this very subject now i know why consistency you know time and time again we can repeat this message you know the, the continuity of life the survival of the consciousness your ability to develop your awareness and again it's breaking the mold of the vision of a medium be your own medium and i don't mean stood on the church platform i mean stood there washing up and just go i don't mum you know what i've had a really bad day and to get those thoughts mm -hmm. but we as in spiritualism we have that continuity and i think at this time we have that great opportunity to once again be a viable tangible and very present presence within the world because what we do is evidential it is testable it is provable but most of all again this word coming back to me often is the consistency of it mm -hmm. that's me off the road box you carry on yeah no i, I love it. you see it, it just spark such exchanges they spark you know and then you start to think and then you start to question and this is this is what i love we should question each other we should question ourselves. So you say evidential mediumship. You want to have that a bit more clear. What is what we do? But but you see, I am here now and say, do you know what? For me, trans mediumship should be evidential. Everything provided within a trans communication, or yeah. uh, if if it is philosophical or if it's from loved ones, it should still be evidential. It, it still has to have validation points for someone who listens and say, the spirit knows me. The spirit world knows me. They know who I am. They know where I am and, and what I need in this very moment to move forward. Mm -hmm. The same, healing mediumship. It's not just hands-on, mm -hmm. a body. It needs to have an evidential element within it that proves that spiritualist healing or spiritual healing is valuable has intelligence you know there i get passionate because because i was once asked the question it was a nice question actually it pushed me a little bit in my ego it's like i was i was a bit caught off guard and was like asked hey david how do you feel to be seen as in a pigeonhole with the healing that i was like Huh? How dare you? <laughs> no, how dare you? But the fact is, all mediumship for me is the foundation is healing. The yeah. message I get from my nan, from my husband, from my, my daughter, my son, whoever is communicating, in the end, it touches something within the soul and it brings healing, it brings comfort. Trans mediumship, it should touch the soul of the listeners. And Mark, you know, you saw the great mediums. And Laurie, I don't know you that much, but I assume you have had great trans mediumship that you witnessed. And you know, you are listening to the words, but it's not just the words. It's the power that touches you within your core. And you cannot unhear it anymore. You cannot go back home and say, oh, what I heard yesterday doesn't resonate with me and I move on normally as i haven't heard anything before it just it just touches you somehow within you that that's mediumship it touches the core of the listener you see so in my opinion all mediumship is purpose in its core is healing absolutely yeah. definitely 
I'm just going to quickly interject with just two quick topics. Number one, David, so far you've called me 77, and now you've ruined the fact that I've been doing for the last 18 months saying about evidential medium, because actually what you just said is totally right. All mediumship is evidential. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to find a new phrase. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um... Evidential healing mediumship. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a new one. Evidential healing copyright. transformative <laughs> mediumship. The trouble is, if you just abbreviate, you end up with, um. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Lovely. Uh, actually, yeah, that, that is, it is so right. It's so right what you're saying. Mark, what's your thoughts there? I mean, for, for me, very much... Healing is the is the key thing to to all that we do. It transforms, and you see. I think even when we come down into the philosophy, which for me is is a huge, huge, huge part, and the greater message rather than just the personal message, and whether it's trance inspired, etc., it's how we we move into that. And it's interesting. There's a few people that I've talked to recently. And they keep saying how frightened they are of, of, of speaking and of philosophy. And, and you know, and I work with students, as I'm sure David does, I know you do, Laurie, as well, that it's trying to get people to realise that once we start to be inspired, it's not just our mind and it's not just our knowledge. Um, although our knowledge is, is, you know, useful, our life experience as a, a spirit in a body walking the planet is incredibly pertinent to who we are as a medium who we are as a healer you know our personal experiences are going to fashion the medium and the healer that we are and and so therefore what we have gone through what we have experienced um in our own journey in our own um lives and loves and losses um fashion uh the medium that we become the teacher that we become you know, my um, my early journey in mediumship with other mediums was quite horrendous, and I nearly walked away on many occasions. Mm -hmm. But it it fashioned me into a medium who ended up working a lot with damaged students who had been hurt by tutors or circle leaders or the movement in general, whatever it may be. So at the time, I might have been thinking, why on earth would I choose to go through something like this? But then on the opposite side of it, I now say, ah, now that becomes the strength that I can help others to find as well. So even in my own journey, the healing also takes place as we as we learn and as we grow. And, and now when I see people that are going, oh, I'm going to give it all up because this person said this and this happened. And I say, look, go back to the initial point. Why do you want to do this? What is it that calls you, draws you from within your soul? What is it? What is it? Why did you want to even do this? what was it that made you want to be this person, this medium, this healer? Mm -hmm. and, and my comment is you can choose to do whatever. The spirit world will love you nonetheless. Whatever decision you make, they'll love you nonetheless. However, if you really want this and you walk away because of someone else, they win. Yeah. And, and Glyn, <clears throat> Glyn was the person back when I was about 24, 25, that actually made me think, do you know what? I'm not walking away from this. It's mm. too important. And I found someone who I resonate with so much. And, and it gave me, it, it made me feel, okay, there are people that, that aren't going to cause me problems. There are people that aren't going to make problems for me. And, and he kept me going with it. And he said, you know, you've got to keep going. And he used to say to so many people, you've got something, keep going keep searching keep looking you know and that's what sometimes we really need is and again that's part of the healing just to have these lovely conversations as david said you know mediums very rarely well we, we do sometimes but we very rarely take time out as mediums to be with other mediums to sit and discuss our mediumship and glenn and i had a few um times when we made little retreats just for us working mediums to go and sit and just to sit, to talk, to question, you know, that's what that's what we did. And it was so refreshing because it wasn't like you were on a course. You were just there saying, well, what 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 do you enjoy or what upsets you or what's questioning you at the moment? 
and and that's that's what you know i mean i know laurie and i and i'm sure you do as well david have these lovely private conversations where you really get into the the nub of what's affecting you but actually it, you know mediumship if we're not careful can be quite isolating because we're working all the time on everyone else's mediumship and helping them mm. but where are we touching base with other mediums and and other people who can question us push us challenge us um you know we don't we don't always do that and there's there's that need um you know as well absolutely yeah thank you you reminded me mark thank you i've said two points um the other point was you both use this word about the experience of spiritualism and again this is another thing i've been working with but no doubt david's going to ruin this for me as well so <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I often say to the congregation you know what remember this is an experience this service you know tomorrow morning and this is not an arrogant boast we're going to have between 40 and 50 people in here you make this service mm -hmm. we are your servants on the platform it's you and if one of you wasn't here it would be totally different so remember you know we, this is not netflix this is not disney plus we're not paid that much but this is an experience for you to take away and examine and question and come back with questions on it yeah. um because as you may gather i'm slightly passionate about mm -hmm. what we do because do you know what every Sunday and the demonstrators we have here, except Mark, um, <laughs> the demonstrators we have here do what I call the job. And not only do they provide exceptional evidence supporting the continuity of life, but in and through all the aspects of the service, they deliver hope. Mm -hmm. They deliver hope. They take away that sting of life or they give the salve for the people to apply themselves. Mm. And that's what, that's why I'm passionate about this, because this is, this is valuable. This is immense. You know, what greater truth? There is no death. Sorry, there is no greater truth. Mm. There is no death. But time and time again, we've got to engage our classes our circles our congregations the wonderful people who are watching uh, us tonight online you know in that experience find it feel it touch it investigate it <laughs> i forgot the cat was in here i just nearly had an accident then <laughs> well <clears throat> yeah that experience Mm. um yeah I, I think we've really got to remember that you mm. know and get people to not give them an experience but to open them up to mm. that experience we've got the lovely amory hogan wonderful refreshing evening with wonderful speakers what are you watching love <laughs> people, who <know> <laughs> people who know their topic and expressing real thoughts on mediumship as a whole thank you actually thank you Amory. yeah I think, Laurie, you said you said really something um, important. It is a congregation, and I did once uh, an evening of mediumship, and I was introduced, and the uh, the chair person said, "And now sit back, relax, and enjoy." Mm. And I thought, "No, you don't relax. You don't just enjoy." You get your brains ready to think and remember. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, excuse yeah. me, um, relax, sit back and enjoy. Um, we're not in the cinema, are we? Just, no, just seriously. Can we go around with ice creams, ice cream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and I, I, I tried not to ruin what you said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I really do, but I... I and this is because I'm coming from Switzerland, so we I have a different, a little bit of a different approach because I'm not. Don't misunderstand me. All that listen, the spirit world is sacred. I love the churches, honestly. I find it 
uh, terrible when the church closes because in Europe, we would be happy to have churches. Here it is so normal we have it. Yeah. They've always been here and therefore we expect it to always continue. And it's not the case. So this is this is why I'm I, I, I love it. But I say and, and the spirit world says we are in a corporation. Okay. Spirit mind, my human mind or if we want to say my spirit self mind are in a corporation with this process. And therefore, I am never anybody's servant. I am in a corporation and therefore I am also in a corporation with the audience to be willing to be critical but empowering at the same time. Yeah. This is actually where, where the congregation needs to be trained. And hey, congregation, you have a duty as well. It's not just your money. It is your willingness to have a great evening with a logical, analytical, critical mind. You know what I miss sometimes within our movement is like we are not allowed to be critical. Of course we are allowed to be critical. What we are not allowed to is to be destructive. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the spiritual side. Yeah. But hey, and come on, Mark and Laurie, you, you work as a medium yourself. You know when you had a flyer of an evening. Mm -hmm. Come on. Every medium knows. And you know, I know when I am just there, but not quite. Okay? Because it's a living force, isn't mm -hmm. it? And you said it, Laurie, it is an experience. It is a momentarily experience that can create because the atmosphere is perfect. Mm -hmm. Everyone who joins in if they are perfect in mood, in, in, in excitement, in willingness, then you have a flyer. If everybody sits there, it's like, oh, do you know what? Actually, I don't want to be here. And mm -hmm. oh, yes, another one gets the message and I don't get anything. And I start to fiddle with my phone and so on. Mm -hmm. Of course, it will affect the energy because people mm -hmm. don't know about energy anymore. Yeah. We don't teach them. And, and, and Mark, the sorry, is the sorry. same. Yeah. Excuse me, Mark. No, no, and what you said with 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 the philosophy, mm. and and I just and then I'm quiet. Uh, Judy Simon, I don't know if you know her, but it took me 22 years to understand what she said. 22 years, she said the message, evidential mediumship, is the message for one person, but the philosophy is the message for everyone. everyone. Yeah. Hey guys, I have a diploma. Well, well done, David. It's a great achievement. I'm not under mining my work that i put in they took me 22 years to to yeah. to realize hey this 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 philosophy is the message for every single one in this room absolutely Sorry. absolutely and you see where you're talking about the congregation david i mean luckily laurie's got them incredibly well trained at pool um <laughs> you should see the introduction to the mediums demonstrating but i think you know we again just like we we talk about people learning in in to demonstrate and to work um you know people sometimes go to demonstrations and there's very little instruction from the platform about interaction and therefore i always um and i'm sure you do david and no laurie does as well there is that need to say to people now come on it's a conversation talk back yes no don't know not sure not but i said if you imagine if you're picking up a phone call to your loved one and you yeah. sit there and say nothing that connection is is not going to stay around very long. You've got to keep that energy moving. And again, that understanding of energy, we, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, I can give messages. And you say, how, what about energy in a congregation? What do you, what do you know about that? And people say, well, I, I just listen to the spirit world. And, and that, manip if I say manipulation of energy, I don't mean that in a negative form, but to move within the energy and the power, to know um, Lawrence, myself, and, and uh, two other mediums did a demonstration, and it was, was it nearly two hours, I think it was, yeah. and we all did half an hour each, and, and by the time it was getting to me, I could feel everyone, you know, that restless numb bum syndrome, and yeah. you could tell that people were getting a little fidgety, mm -hmm. so, and I was thinking, oh, you can feel it going like this, and it's coming up to me, so I got on the platform, and I went, right, who's got numb bum? Everybody stand up, wiggle your bums, sit back down again and and it changed that energy but other people might get up and just go oh you know all oh, the energy was very hard at the end 
you're it, you're on the platform with the other world and your energy and your voice change it you know yep. change the energy notice the energy but again are are people being taught and shown that and even chair people no no offense laurie you do great on chair so just butt you up for the next time i'm there in december yeah, <laughs> but, it, it's, but again it's it's an aspect of learning and mm. and is it being taught not only to mediums but also to chairs as well yeah very true and it, it's it's always with the introduction this is a three-way conversation it's getting that over to our congregations as well you know we want this triangle working so we want the spirit world talking to us <coughs> us talking to the sitters it's very hard to do back to front but then the sitter activating and sending their thoughts back up to the spirit world so you've got this flow of energy I'm not going to do this. This is all back to front, but you know, get get what I mean. Uh, this flow of energy going, um, not just working with the spirit and cutting the sitter out, or working with the sitter and not listening to the spirit world. Yeah. We've got to have that, you know, going around of the energy because as the sitter sat there reconnecting with that loved one, that loved one's picking up those thoughts and coming yeah. back down. So it just keeps all that moving. You see, I find it very interesting and it's great to be together. You see, I, I'm all about debate, exchange. Sometimes it hurts a little bit, but it's not about hurting. It's about moving and, 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 and growing, okay? So we are talking about evidential mediumship. The only thing that a medium can do is their best in that very moment, yeah. okay? I promise to do my best. But, but because it's a living force, we cannot guarantee that every night is a good night. We're not robots, are we? So, for example, to, to, to support what, what I say here is like, I came to the end of my demonstration. And I was in Germany and talking about stillborn is, is always a bit difficult anyway. Okay? It's, it's still a taboo. As, as soon as, as, as we... And, and I know, I knew stillborn or baby that didn't really touch the earth. Nobody took it. The last one, you know, you have a flyer and it was lovely. And then at the end, you come, nobody. And you you both know, you you recognize this yeah. silence when the whole congregation goes, <gasps> mm -hmm. and, and it's like, oh my God, the medium is wrong. The medium can't play, you know, it's like, yeah. and, and you yeah. can see the faces like in shock in, hey guys, breathe, breathe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, and, and what I want to say, I it was the last one, it wasn't a good communication, so I thought, and so would have 99% of the attendants would have judged me that wasn't a good last contact. Mm. But at the very end, then the father, a father came to me and, and was in tears and said, listen, you spoke about my daughter, but my daughter who is alive, who doesn't know about that she has a sister in the world of spirit who is actually buried not that far from here i couldn't say anything because this is a secret mm. yeah. and he was in tears and i was like wow what a moment huh mm. what a moment and, and i'm not just blowing my trumpet mm. this, this is for people yeah. who might not be able to make it or, or place it because there are circumstances where people don't speak up. Yeah. You know? yes. And and what that helped, because um, his wife was on my call, well, his new wife was on his on my course the next day. And she came and said, listen, 22 years did that secret been held secret. Yesterday he spoke with his daughter, and his daughter looked at him and said, Yes, I know Nan told me. Nan has already told me years ago. Wow. Now, can you see that man? He was in tears. I'm not kidding. He carried this burden, this secret for his wife, for his daughter. And actually what it just needed is, hey, I'm here mm -hmm. to release and to heal and to be open about, hey, daughter, you have actually another sibling 
who we have to bury. And she knew 22 years he carried this burden. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a communication seems not to be okay. But can we not give the medium a slack and say, Do you know what, maybe behind the scenes, it was maybe the best communication yeah. ever? Well, no one can judge another person's message, not really. I mean, I have to say, we do know that in the past, there has been a tick list of what constitutes a perfect message or communication. And really, that's that may be from an evidential point of view, as in statistics, a CV of the deceased, if you like. However, the personal or, or sometimes the most seemingly insignificant moments that will touch or move someone or something that they have yet to find out about. I had a sitting donkeys years ago with a friend of my mum's and she came in for this sitting and and I started and, and I knew she was northern because she had a lovely northern accent and I'm from the north and but I haven't got the accent and in this sitting I started to talk about connections to Blackpool mm. and she said no Yorkshire and I went no I said I have a lady here from Blackpool no and I said well this lady's showing me and I started to describe a house and then I heard a road name, which is where my grandparents used to live in Blackpool. And in the end, it went on and on. And she said, no, 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 no. And, and she said, isn't there anyone else? And I said, this is who I've got. And this lady wants to connect to you. And she was like, no, it doesn't mean anything. And there were names and everything that just wouldn't take it. And I said, OK. I said, well, I'm really sorry. We've obviously, it's, it's not been what you hoped for, but there we are. Anyway, a year later, she said to my mum, can you just apologise? Um, we went to visit my husband's um, mother uh, in, your, in Lancashire and her sister lived on the road next to where my grandparents lived in Blackpool. Mm -hmm. And it was a whole year before she found the evidence of that aunt-in-law coming in to connect. So again, and Glyn used to do this with us, and I know I think Gordon used to do it, would make people have sittings where there was no feedback. You gave a whole half hour sitting, you weren't allowed to get yes, no, don't know. You just gave what the other world did, and you may find out that week, you may not find out that month, you may not find out that year. And it was to get you to trust that as the medium, you were working on behalf of the spirit world or with the spirit world, and you know, you could just you can only give what is there mm -hmm. and and th so therefore long you know this sometimes if i if i go well i've got such and such would you understand that no great okay and we'll go so let's see where we are with it and you get there yeah. and i think that that this as you say david the critical nature sometimes of people um in a negative way Mm. and people judging oh they're going on to the psychic oh they're doing this oh they're doing that it's it's a very different kettle of fish sitting in a congregation watching a medium work and going i could do better than that like armchair politicians and armchair singers and then getting up there and being in that energy and in that moment and yeah. i think that if people understood more what it feels like to stand up there and be working within that energy and that power. I think it brings a, a hopefully a greater understanding to the process of communication. Because sometimes people say it looks so easy, and sometimes, sometimes it is, and other times you're thinking, "Oh my God, <laughs> this is this is this is just take me now. I'll go now. I'll become a guide. I'll do whatever. Just take me now." And yet people come up after that demonstration. And they say, thank you for that message. It was wonderful. And you just think, mm. but whether I judge it as being the best is not always important. I can only be in that moment, be, you know, part of the communication and do what, what needs to be done and accept it is what it is in that moment. I still can look back and, and critique. I can look at maybe if there's areas I could have done differently <coughs> as, what, as we should do. Um, you know, for God knows how many years, I had my mum sat in the car with me every going home after every service, and she said, "Well, don't do this and don't do that." It doesn't come across well when you say this or that. So I had my own personal, you know, critique going through it with me, mm. and then I'd sit and also talk to the other world and say, "What happened in that dem? 
what happened with that communication? And I would I would get the answers to then mm -hmm. understand where there was issues energetically or where I wasn't communicating it with the nuance yeah. that was needed. Yeah. You know, that's part of the journey. Yeah, really. And uh, if David taking away all the things that I've held dear and throwing them in the trash can wasn't enough tonight, and uh, Marie Hogan's decided to join in on the kick for Lawrence. Thank you, darling. When are you next here? <laughs> anyway, loving this. We state there is no I in team, but there is me in team. How do you guys feel when a chairperson, me, says we need to hear your voice, but all you are allowed to say is no, yes, or maybe? My mm -hmm. nan and dad come through and I want to talk to them. What's your thoughts on that, David? Well, well there, there are, I think there are two opinions about this one. I like to have the yes, this, I like to have very clear no's. Yeah. I don't like this helping moment, maybe. I don't like maybe at all, honestly. Maybe, maybe it's too weak for me yeah. as a medium because what I want to say here as well is like, and I hope you understand where I'm coming from, when you present your mediumship to the public, it needs to be trained enough or well enough that on your worst day, you're still good enough. Mm -hmm. That's what I say, okay? So, so yes, no is great. Mm -hmm. Some people, I know they have the need to tell, but the problem is if they tell you, your mind starts to listen what they tell you, and therefore you come out of the power. And if I'm listening to you, I'm not listening to the spirit world. But then I also say, if there is a need to share something, then the medium should be capable in holding the moment and not lose the link. Mm -hmm. Not every medium, especially if you are new to what you're doing, is capable to do this. So in a way, um, very short, yes, no's, doesn't help either. You know, because it's like, oh my God, am I here regimented or whatsoever? <laughs> Give me more. I need to know more. It's just like, <laughs> come on. What yeah. do you want? Telephone numbers and so on. Mark said wonderfully, I heard the name. I rarely hear. So so my mediumship works through the seeing, through the feeling, and, and I might not have it as precise if I hear it. It would be lovely if it worked like that. But sometimes people then take away from the moment that we're there to provide to prove through an individual communication aha that would also work with your mom with your dad with your sister with your brother and so on and so on so i i i appreciate when they don't feed you too much mm. because it it it's not helpful but i also know when you are connecting with someone and you're full on it of course you have it. But demonstrating mediumship is, I demonstrate. It is not a private environment where I believe, I don't know, Laurie, Mark, there you have more of this exchange where I have people who say, do you know what? You gave me enough evidence. I want to hear, can she answer questions that I have? And I say, I try with the risk that my mind is coming in because I'm listening to the question and I feel your need. And I hope I can stay within the post so strongly that I really listen to mum. And maybe she doesn't really tell you what you want to hear. Mm. Are you okay with that? Mm. No. So from my side, I, I really appreciate if it's not too much to be yeah. honest. Yeah. I think I think there's a there's there's a difference between them giving too much um and starting to say, Oh yes, that was my uncle who was a civil engineer. Mm -hmm. And you've just suddenly look, got the, the 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 familial connection and the working environment. It's like oh, great, but when someone responds in an enthusiastic way, oh yes, he was like that. Oh, she was mm -hmm. totally like that. That energy and enthusiasm then starts to pump the energy into the into the dem as well. I, I had a demonstration recently, and I went to this woman. And I said, "Your," I said, "I've got your dad here," and I said, "Your dad." is saying, is showing me him being out in an allotment. And he said, I gave Percy Thrower a good run for his money. Now, Percy Thrower was a gardener on TV many years ago, David. 
um, you know, when you were a twinkle in an eye. And <laughs> far too young, David, to remember. Far too young. Um, and she laughed and she said, yes, he even used to say that. And mm. of course, that lovely response made mm. everyone laugh and go, oh, but, you know, yes or no doesn't always quite cut it. So I do agree, mm. Anne-Marie, and I do. I think it's n not oversharing. <laughs> is yeah. what we don't want we want enthusiasm yes he was like mm -hmm. that yes that makes sense and and the enthusiasm there i mean that sort of yeah no no yeah and and you just think imagine if you turned up on someone's doorstep after 30 years and you went hi right mm -hmm. yeah yeah i i wouldn't want to go and visit them again for another 30 years if that's how they're going to greet me so yeah. there is a level that it is communication and allowing without oversharing there to be that lovely connection because it is about the feel of the spirit not just not just ticking the list and being are we correct it's actually is this reaching you is this touching you is this moving you and a private sitting david is quite right is a, is a different kettle of fish is a is a whole d mm. deeper level and much more that comes into it than than in our public demonstration for sure yeah I hope that has answered the question. It was only Emory. Don't worry. <laughs> How dare it was you. Very good. How dare you? It was a very good question, by the way. It was. It was. It was but, you know, I'm, I'm just... Mm. Lawrence bashing has got to stop, gentlemen. <gasps> we're, not, we're not bashing you. You'd know if we were bashing you, Lawrence. <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> I'll charge it on the bill for the month. <laughs> no, I think... I think what is really important is natural. Mm. Mediumship is natural, isn't it? Yeah. So so the more natural we can actually deliver it, the, the better. Yeah. And, and be um, ourselves. Well, yes. So, so personality is important. You don't... Um, sometimes the divine service is a bit... You know, sometimes divine service can be a bit daunting because you are representing a bit differently. Mm -hmm. you no, know, um, the words that you choose, how you present yourself, and that's quite right because it is it is an act of devotion. It is it is it is worship, and and it's a celebration of life. That's why we are dressed up, you know. Right. That's why we're not standing there just in ripped jeans, because yeah. because you have respect for for, for the act, and uh, but it still is allowed to be unique personalities are allowed to shine through uh, your uniqueness as a medium as a person is allowed to be shown and and sometimes it, it feels a bit rigid you know like oh i'm not allowed to to make any mistakes or to say something wrong or oh my god i mean readings for example if you have to read in front of people that that was never easy in school come on and then you you, you stand on on a, on a rostrum and you have to read this is like Come on, that sweat. No, this running. No, seriously. <laughs> and 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 no, and all traumas and and not good enough and whatever is is, is running through. But but you, you see, being being in a community where we understand each other, we are where we are. We try our best. I am prepared. What I don't like is not being prepared mm. because it's too important to not to be prepared. Mm. But hey, if there is a bit of a hiccup, that's natural, isn't it? That's that's human, and and I find that needs to be celebrated as well. I I love that energy that you bring to the divine service there about the celebratory. Mm. You know, that there is this sort of like in in my humble opinion, which is probably going to be wrong according to you two, but I don't care. <laughs> <now>. um, <laughs> there is this line between still being respectful and reverent mm. but also being human mm. you know and it is about you know you should come out of a service as i say primarily with hope you mm. should come out of a service uplifted mm. you should come out of a service of you know possibly making friends within the church community um, and as a serving medium myself, you, you do go to some places and they're so orthodox, they actually outdo a high mass or something in their approach. And it's quite a heavy energy, mm. um, I find. But, you know, you have the other places as well where you go in and just go, 
yet and what more can we ask for as mediums is to be ourselves because if we're being ourselves that bond mm -hmm. that link that communication that cooperation between the two worlds is only going to benefit by that yeah we're having to stand there and do devotionals and do this and do that and having to constantly think about what we've got to do next that is going to affect all aspects of our evidential mediumships I've got to change well done. Thank you. <laughs> Evidential medium ships. Did you hear that, Mark? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Multiple. Yeah. No, really it, 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 it is so true what you just said. And you see, for me, when I look back, what was the most difficult part of a divine service? Is it, I mean, I had many because I'm a foreigner. My English wasn't as good as it is now, and it's still improvable. But, but it's like, how on earth am I going to pray on behalf of all the people? That was my biggest stress. Because in a way, an address, if you put the work in, you can, you can prepare one and you can just, if you are prepared, you can just talk about it. You know, even if it's not inspirational, well, at least you have prepared it even though I wished it was more spirit inspired. Yeah. Uh, but 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 then with, with that with that prayer to make that somehow important and valuable for people, then you realize all of a sudden, yeah, but I don't have a relationship with prayer. I don't actually think prayer is helpful. And then I mean the Lord's Prayer, for example, is a funny one. I've never was able to recite that in German, but yet I am able to do this in English mm -hmm. because I had to learn it. But in Switzerland, it would never have crossed my mind to to say this because I did have I did have no relationship with it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. empty words. If I just say, uh, uh, "Our Father uh, in heaven, hallowed be thy name," blah blah, that's that's. That's powerless, isn't it? Yeah. But, but when I when I all of a sudden get an access to it, and I say, "Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come." If I really put meaning into that, because I have meaning, then it creates the power that you actually want in the spiritualist service, because we're talking about the power. But not every time you see the power in action unfortunately and it means that you have to make it personal you have to give part of you into it and that is who you are so so if you don't embrace that within within your presentation it will always be a bit clumsy or a bit shallow or a bit mm. how do you feel about that I think your your intention setting for the whole service mm. as well. You're setting the energy because the prayers, the, the opening prayers is right at the beginning of a service, virtually. Mm. Okay, there might be introductions, there might be a song and then an opening prayer. But moving into that power, you're setting the intention. I always used to say to people um, that, you know, a prayer doesn't have to be a litany of woe, mm. you know, because very much when when I used to sit in some of the circles in the early days, people's prayers were so depressing it was all the terrible and awful sick things in the world and the wars and the poverty and the, and i'm sitting there going i'm losing the will to live before we sit to go to the divine True. whereas the 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 intention is to the to the greater spirit to the divine power to the spirit world whoever that we're opening ourselves to that love and that power for this service and whatever inspired words come into where we need to lead then they move into that into that flow and and as you know laurie over the years we've said the the prayers are never the same they the intention the power the inflection i love the lord's prayer but i i say it in a totally different rhythm to everybody else which really puts people off in the congregation because i do a totally different rhythm to it to my right. own healing <clears throat> but you know a lot of people because we were taught it as kids and we had to recite it so verbatim, they could be reciting a shopping list mm -hmm. because there's not the feeling. But the energy and the power of that prayer 
and then the 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 reading moving into the address the hymns that have been chosen and just suddenly coincidentally not coincidentally match in the mm -hmm. you know often when i go to talk about something lawrence afterwards goes well that's explained why that's been on my mind the last two days mm -hmm. and it comes up everybody's interconnected everything is and it's this intelligence of the power to know and of the spirit to know as it moves you and i think that fear everyone um you know one of the biggest things that that people feel they have a fear of is public speaking but i think people are actually more fearful not of standing up and saying but of what people are thinking when they're standing up and saying and and this is where i say to people you know you, if if you're thinking about everybody else and what they're going to say you're not concentrating like you said earlier about people in the congregation talking too much giving too much information if you're focusing on oh i'm really worried about what everyone's going to think about my prayer i'm not in prayer i'm not connecting into that power i'm worried about here and actually saying just let me be this channel whatever it is however it works and however few or however much that prayer becomes because you know some prayers are short sweet and to the point others mm. become almost this power of, of of a of a living meditation in that moment of prayer so and again a lot of people <clears throat> are fearful of the prayers the readings the address and and it's and it's shaping some of the churches going oh well, don't worry we'll do all of that and you just do the dem yeah. and mm -hmm. and and my opinion is if you're serving <coughs> on the church platform i'm going to get shot but if you're serving on a church platform as a church medium you should be doing the work Absolutely. as the prayers the readings the philosophy Absolutely. and not just going oh i'll come and just do dems i won't do divine service yeah as the church president i've been approached by people i don't do prayers i don't do philosophy but when are you going to book me well when you can do prayers and when you can do philosophy yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah. service but interested just something of interest it may be of interest to you david on the platform here we've yeah. had our opening prayers sometimes delivered in swedish mm. in danish in polish and in Portuguese. And do you know what? Every time the congregation agreed, we we felt it. Mm. We felt that. We felt that energy. Because the power is universal, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. It's it needs cool. no translator. Oh, I like that. I'm gonna really? call it that phrase. That's my phrase. Don't nick it. No, um, <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Yeah. Gentlemen, do you know what? It's been just absolutely wonderful uh, being in your company. Thank you, thank you, thank you ever so much. Mark, thank you for your time tonight and your You're experience welcome. and knowledge. Yeah, David, I, I really like you. Be afraid. No. Yeah. I really <laughs> <laughs> You'll pull Still. that mind up tomorrow hello no um yeah. i i really like what you're saying and where you're coming you. from so i absolutely applaud it uh it's been brilliant 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 talking to you big thank you to everybody watching us tonight i hope lots of good comments about how interesting the topics have been please remember you can watch us oh no you can't watch our service tomorrow it's not being streamed tomorrow that's the wish of the demonstrator and if the demonstrator doesn't want to be streamed absolutely fine it is not a problem next saturday we have kathy lee Tzuklis, spirit artist as our guest uh, and she'll be talking about her work with spirit art and we will be having slides and shows of the various standards of spirit art and this lady yeah wow <laughs> absolutely wow but in the meantime any parting notes please gentlemen mark first i i think from what we've talked about this evening it be the one that asks why ask the questions go and search look for what the spirit world and spiritualism is for you you know, don't be confined. Don't think, oh, it's just this. 
explore all of our early mediums and pioneers were explorers and still today mm -hmm. mediumship is an exploration of our awareness our ability so allow yourself to explore beyond the service yeah mm, it's lovely sure. now i have to follow that one now isn't yeah. that incredible Crackle. no but i i, I really i would i really want to say spiritualism at its heart is the seeking of and, and searching of truth mm -hmm. and to seek and search the truth we need minds that challenge and what made spiritualism so great was the non-fear of being challenged in our point of views yeah. that moved that moved the world spiritualists weren't just mediums they were reformers when yeah. we go back in time they reformed and I think we need to bring back that spirit of reformation, of going into debates, discussions, and still be friends, even though we don't think the same, but we know we're on a good path to maybe know a little bit more. So that's yeah. what I actually want to leave the people. Well, well, well said. One of my phrases, you know, we can actually disagree and remain friends. You know. <laughs> Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you, thank you so much. Been thank you, Laurie. Thank Perfect. you. And thank if you, you need, if you need to to go into a therapy, just send me the bill. Oh, I'm 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 totting it up already, mate. Yeah. <laughs> you no, we, need, we need therapy after the bikini comment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was quite the picture. I'm quite the visual. <laughs> There was a comment. Um, there we go. The lovely Reverend Ashley Oliver regarding the bikini in the Antarctic comment. So thanks, Ashley. <laughs> I hope it helps. And thank uh, you for taking up enough of your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It's been a well. joy tonight. Thank you.